Hi, welcome to An Abundant Life with Cynthia Strelkoff and Galena Strelkoff. We are here on our farm, Cold Comfort Farm, near Butler, Missouri, where we raise goats, cashmere goats, and we have alpaca. We rescue eight horses, and we've got several other animals that Galena has acquired. Yes. She's definitely the animal person here. She does all of the herding. I do more of the spinning, the knitting, the weaving. She does wonderful dyeing. She's a wonderful colorist, and she'll be taking you on farm tours. We're also the proud owners of the Francis Langhouse Bed and Breakfast Inn in Washington, Missouri, and we do a lot of our shooting there, our decorating episodes and some of our homemaking episodes. We lead an abundant life, even in this time of COVID, and we want to share that with you and hopefully bring abundance to your life also. So please hit subscribe and like at the bottom of this video, and more videos will come to you just as soon as we make them. Now in this video, we're going to show you how to make a little Halloween boo pillow, and we're going to show you how we make our dishcloths. Our dishcloths are very, very popular, and we're always knitting back orders of them. And we like to use peaches and cream cotton. Galena does a lot of the dyeing of the cotton. And I do a lot of the knitting, but she also taught me to knit these dishcloths. And as orders come in, we try and keep up. We're trying to do an order of 13 for little wedding uh, favor gifts for the wedding party in uh, California. So we've got that all to do. And we want you to tune in. chickens. I have two Americanas, one Easter Egger, and one Lace Wine Dot, and a mixed rooster. They are good for laying eggs, and they are good and docile chickens. This is She is a white miniature. We keep her as a guard animal with her mama, Norma. They are very loving and well cared for. And she's so soft. And she is so soft. So my mom made this wonderful seasonal table here for fall. And I just want to show you wonderful little dollar store sequined pumpkins. She's put the turkey napkins out. This pattern of china is called Louise, and it's by Louise Perkenhammer. And she was a Bavarian uh, china designer and actually an owner of a company, the Perkenhammer China Company. So she was way ahead of her time back in the 1800s. And some friends of mine made me this darling little pumpkin. And actually, it's just a toilet paper roll covered in this wonderful fall fabric with a stem sticking up in a nice bowl. See, you can make something out of nothing. You don't even have to go shopping. And I just wanted to share this wonderful tablescape with you today. So we are going to make a dishcloth. I put one of these dishcloths out in my B&B all the time. It's a hand knitted dishcloth. I'm going to show you how I do the long tail cast on and how I just make it with simple knitting. So I've got a slip knot here on my number 10 needle and this is cotton and it's dyed by my daughter Galena. I loop it around my thumb, stick the needle in towards my thumb and then take the long tail, wrap it and pull it off. So now I have two stitches. Loop around the thumb, needle up through, wrap it with the tail, slip it off. I've got three. Loop around my thumb, up through, wrap it with the tail, and now I've got four.
So you're going to start this dishcloth with four stitches, and that's called the long tail cast on method. Okay, and now we're just going to do one stitch of knit, and then in the next stitch we're going to knit into the front of the stitch and into the back of the stitch. So that increases it by one stitch, and we're going to do that at the beginning of each row, and then knit two. We're going to turn our work, knit into the first stitch, regular knit, and now knit into the front of the stitch and through the back loop, the same stitch, okay, and that made our increase, knit to the end. Knit one, regular, pause, So you're going to knit one, knit into the front of the next stitch, one into the back. Now that's your increase again, and knit to the end of the row. You're going to proceed like this until you have 40 stitches on your needles. And at that point, I will teach you how to decrease. We'll see you then. Welcome back. So now your dishcloth looks like this. You've got your 40 stitches running across the top and you've got your beautiful triangle. And I'm working with peaches and cream uh, cotton yarn that my daughter Galena has dyed these beautiful colors. Now we're gonna start our decrease on our dishcloth so we're going to knit the first stitch, and then we're going to knit two together. And that makes your decrease. Go ahead and just knit across. These make wonderful stocking stuffers, hostess gifts. Everybody likes a knitted dishcloth. And some people's last for 20 years and before they need to replace them. I always like to bundle them in threes and give them as a gift. They don't have to match. Everybody's just happy to get them. So I can usually knit a dishcloth during a movie a day if you just have some quiet time to sit down. Now we order the large cones of the cotton because we make a lot of dishcloths and uh, you can get quite a few out of a cone and if you just order off-white or white or a slight variegation on that then you can dye and over dye this cotton in case you get tired of, of making the same color over and over again. Now I've turned my work and again I'm going to knit one and then I'm going to knit two together making my decrease and then I'm going to knit across. I'm going to continue in this fashion knitting one and knitting two together and then knitting across until I only have four stitches on my needles and at that point I will show you how to bind off your stitches and finish off your dishcloth nicely. So I'll see you back then. 
Galena, this is just the most beautiful yarn that I think you've ever dyed. I love the colorway and the nuances, and I know you achieved it in a very different way than we usually dye. Can you tell us about this? I first added vinegar, and then I added the dye. Then I dropped in the yarn, and then I added the water. And stirred the pot, and you came up with this wonderful, wonderful colorway. I'm just in love with it. Now we're going to go ahead and teach you the bind off here. And so just as you knitted the first stitch in every row, you're actually going to knit the first stitch here. And then you're going to bind off the next stitch by knitting and bringing that back stitch up and over and off. And do this as loosely as you can. I pull a little extra yarn there until you get to the last stitch. And there we go. And then we will just cut this yarn and bring it back through this loop and we'll have another wonderful dishcloth. So I love my dining room at night here at the bed and breakfast and I'm preparing for four ladies who are staying here that love wine and so I got them these cute little wine bags and uh, I've just set one at each of their place setting instead of something formal and of course Halloween's coming so I had to do this glitzy feather uh, little centerpiece and the light is just so beautiful here at night with the red walls and the art it just pops out against the red walls and I can't tell you the number of people that say that they've walked by my home at night uh, with the chandelier on and enjoyed the red walls and the art so yeah, I'm glad I shared this with you tonight. So your furniture at your B&B is going to get damaged and it is not heartbreaking as long as you keep samples of your paint color, which I always do. You can have these mixed up at Lowe's, I know. And then I also keep my paint color cards for every wall in this house every piece of furniture because I have to do fast touch-ups I can't have a painter in I can't be running back and forth with swatches so I keep a little notebook with everything and then I keep a little basket in my pantry that has every one of these uh, little samples so I can just run around the house and hit it with color when I have to somebody will scrape a wall with their luggage or do a little damage on this table and like I said, it's not heartbreaking. It's not like when somebody spills hot coffee all over your brand new duvet. Okay, not a disaster, just be prepared.